In a classroom buzzing with excitement, students form groups, discussing an anticipated field trip. Amidst all this, Kimura's eyes are irresistibly drawn to Ai from another group. His friends, with playful nudges and smirks, spill the beans, everyone knows you like Ai. But deep down, Kimura fears Ai might forget her glasses during the trip. It's touching how such small details matter when you care about someone. Taking the lead, Yasuka, sensing an opportunity to play Cupid, suggests combining the two groups. The joy on Kimura's face is palpable when he realizes Ai wants to be in his group. Asuka and the others nod in agreement, saying, it's best if Kimura is there to look out for Ai. That night, Ai, trying to be responsible, puts a spare pair of glasses in her bag. Thoughts of spending the day with Kimura fill her with happiness. But get this, Ai Ai overslept, and if you think that's bad, as she dashed to school, she squashed her glasses. Yup, stepped right on them. Total facepalm moment, right? But wait, she had a spare. Though, turns out, life wanted to play another joke. Those spares? Just some random non-prescription ones she got ages ago. Now they're at this super cool tech museum and everyone's all into the gadgets and gizmos. The gig for the day? Check out the exhibits and jot down some notes. But here's Ai, Ai trying to play it cool while low-key panicking. And then there's Kimura, the guy with this soft spot for her. He caught on. Without making it awkward, he subtly led her to this big info wall. Ai Ai's got this sinking feeling. She knows Kimura's clocked the glasses situation. Feeling a bit guilty? Definitely. But Kimura? He's just being a total sweetheart about it, making it pretty clear that he's got her back, no matter what. Post-event, everyone's wrapping up and guess what I did? In her I can't see a thing state, she ended up tailing a group from a different school. Classic I move, right? She's lost, but who does she call? Our boy, Kimura. So they meet up, and I's like a dam whose gates just opened. She's crying, talking about how she's leaning on Kimura way too much and how she feels like a damsel in distress. But here's the twist. She actually likes the whole damsel thing with Kimura. And Kimura, he's smooth, tells her that being her knight in shining armor feels pretty darn good. I mean, come on, could they be any cuter? The bus ride home? Pure movie magic. I holding onto Kimura's hand like it's the only thing anchoring her to the world. Next day, Ai's brain is like a hamster on a wheel, thinking nonstop about why Kimura is so, you know, Prince Charming-ish. And guess what? She forgot her glasses again. But here's where the plot thickens. She decides to step up her game and tries contacts, those tiny devils she's been avoiding forever. Chatting with Asuka and the gang, Asuka drops the bomb. She thinks everyone can see that Kimura's got the hots for Ai. Meanwhile, Yasaka's sliding into Asuka's DMs. Maho, with her hawk eyes, is like, Girl, you got that lovey-dovey look. The same one Ai's now spotting around Kimura. Could it be? Does Kimura really like her? Eyes on cloud nine. Love's in the air, people. So, Ai rolled into school and, yep, forgot her glasses again. But she's rocking this adorable new hairstyle. Spotting Kimura, she zooms in to get a better look, practically bumping noses with him. Before they know it, the school's rumor mill, led by none other than Narumi. But wait, Hibuchi to the rescue, clears the air and says, Ai's just being her usual blind as a bat self. To avoid any more rom-com mishaps, Kimura decides to play it safe. He tells Ai he's got a cold, you know, to keep her at a non-blurry seeing distance. But our girl Ai hands him a face mask, but as the day unfolds, Ai's got her eagle eyes on Kimura. Narumi and Kimura are chumming it up, and Ai's green monster of jealousy is wide awake. In her fit of distraction and jealousy, she takes a tumble over a stray basketball. It's in the infirmary where the emotions spill. Ai confesses she missed being Kimura's main chat buddy for the day, especially with her limited vision and all. She's got one ask, though. One close-up look at his face daily. Kimura agrees. But boy, was he not prepared for what came next. Ai cups his face and stares and stares. Poor Kimura's blushing so hard he's practically a tomato and he's sweating buckets. It's a rainy day. You know, the kind where you just want to snuggle up and binge watch your favorite show. But no rest for our characters. The school's festival is just around the corner and there's a buzz of excitement in the air. Most of the students are staying after hours to prep for the big day. But guess who's on cloud nine? Yep, Kimura. More time with I? Yes, please. 
While she wanted to be all hands on deck, let's be real. Without her glasses, she's more of a hazard than a help. But here's the twist. She's hoping for a little alone time with him during their break. Spotting her chance, I tails Kimura to the art room as he goes to fetch some glue. The room's all dark and empty. And what does our girl do? Locks him in! She's all like, I haven't had my daily close-up look at your face today. Kimura, thinking I is just feeling unsettled due to her blurry vision, is taken aback when he finally looks into her eyes. There's an intensity, a longing, and it dawns on him, could I possibly have feelings for him too? This thought is like a song stuck on repeat in his mind. The tension, you guys, is so real. The anticipation is killing us. The school festival is drawing near, and Kimura's mom throws a curveball. Hey, how about getting your ears pierced? Kimura's quick on the draw with a firm, nope. But here's the kicker. Remember that brown hair Kimura sports? Yep, that was mom's idea too. Flash forward to the next day. Kimura steps into school and bam, eye scanning the ground like she's looking for a needle in a haystack. Kimura, leaning in to help, spots a shiny little thing and jumps to the conclusion that it's an earring. Hold up, since when did I wear earrings? Images of I flaunting gorgeous earrings flood his mind and dang, she looks stunning in his imagination. But a closer inspection shows no pierced ears. This little mystery has Kimura scratching his head all day. As school wraps up, I pulls out the shiny bead-like object and bam, mystery solved. It's just a bead for the school festival exhibit. The pair end up deep in conversation about earrings, and I admits she finds them super cute but just doesn't have the guts to get her ears pierced. But plot twist, I playfully comments. You know, I bet you'd look pretty handsome with an earring. And just like that, guess who's now contemplating getting his ears pierced? Our boy, Kimura. The power of a simple compliment, eh? It's evening. Now here's a fun fact. Ice folks are pretty strict about her being home by six, but the committee needs extra hands and wants volunteers to stay until seven. Lo and behold, our girl I, possibly driven by the green-eyed monster named Jealousy, decides she's gonna stay and squeeze in some more time with Kimura. The clock strikes 6.30 and I's excitement is slowly replaced with anxiety. That's when Kimura, in a twist of fate, stumbles upon I's phone. Alert Central! Her mom's blown up her phone with missed calls. Panic mode activated. To speed up her departure, Kimura goes undercover, pretending he left so that I would rush home. And boy does she. In the midst of her mad dash, she forgets her shoes and runs out in her indoor slippers. What a scene. But hold on to your seats, folks, because our boy Kimura's sprinting after her with her shoes. Knowing that I's gonna be in deep waters with her mom, Kimura, taking a deep breath, decides to face the music. He meets Ai's mom and spins a story about how I couldn't find her shoes because, well, no glasses. Talk about a quick save. The next day, I bouncing into school all smiles. Now, that's what I call a roller coaster of emotions. The day kicks off with everyone showcasing their talents. While Kimura is sneaking glances at Ai's masterpiece, our girl Ai is lost in the world of Kimura's rather ordinary display. While the rest are enjoying performances inside the auditorium, these two sneak off for a quiet moment. Now, I is donning her glasses today, but that doesn't stop her from wanting to get up close and personal with Kimura's face. I's feeling a tad guilty, thinking she's been too whimsical and needy with Kimura recently, but the plot thickens. Kimura, seemingly in the same boat, confesses he too wants to get a closer look at I's face. No surprises there, I's more than willing. Now here comes the cute bomb. I mentions that Kimura gives her dad vibes, you know, all warm and protective, but he's thinking more along the lines of boyfriend vibes. Ah, the twists and turns of young romance. After the school fest ended, with high school looming over our three RD year middle schoolers, decisions had to be made. In the midst of it all, I pops the golden question, what's your dream, Kimura? Oh man, while he plays it cool saying it's a secret, our boy hasn't even scratched the surface of that thought. But hold up, I's got a revelation. She hands him an old picture with, wanna be daddy's bride when I grow up, scribbled on it. And guess what? It's a super adorable pic of little I in a swimsuit, cuteness level 100. Turns out, even after all these years, her dream remains, to be a bride. She's even taken up cooking, 
but get this. When she proudly shows him her culinary masterpiece, an omelet rice dish, the tomato ketchup art on it looks suspiciously like lipstick. But when Kimura curiously asks her about the design on the omelet, I turns all 50 shades of red. And then the penny drops for Kimura. It's a maple leaf symbolizing him. He wants to be I's husband too. All right, folks, it's home economics class today. And guess what's baking? Cookies. And by a twist of fate, I teams up with the school's heartthrob, Ren. I can almost hear Kimura's heart shatter. He so wanted to taste those cookies made by I's delicate hands. Even Narumi and Hibuchi, their teammates, could feel the tension. Little did they know, I planned to shape her cookies like arcade coins, especially for Kimura. But sharp-eyed Ren caught on immediately. But here's a twist. I notices Ren's bird-shaped cookies. Why? For his next-door neighbor, an older university student he has a crush on. A tale of unspoken love between them unfolds as Kimura feels a pinch of jealousy seeing I and Ren chat away. Suddenly, as school ends, Kimura dashes off. But wait, I catches up to present him with her special cookies. And oh boy, the air got thick with blushing and shy smiles. At night, Kimura, lost in thoughts of I's childhood picture, flips through his family album. Stumbling upon a hilarious photo of his younger self with a nosebleed, he inadvertently tucks it inside his book and takes it to school. By a stroke of misfortune, Yasaka discovers the photo. I, ever so curious, wants a peek, but oops, she forgot her glasses. After school, as they walk home together, I hatches a plan. She sprints home to grab her glasses, intending to see that precious pic of Kimura. But the photo was left behind at school. Not to be defeated, Kimura reenacts the pose from the photo, right there in the park. I, seizing the moment, snaps a pic, creating a shared secret between the two. Shh, it's their little inside joke now. As school ends, and our boy Kimura heads home, he spots I in a deep conversation with a boy from another school. Jealousy intensifies. Hiding behind a vending machine, Kimura tries to eavesdrop. Though he can't catch their words, he sure picks up those vibes. The boy seems quite smitten with I. Without making a scene, our hero sneaks away. But wait for it. Next day at school, I spills the beans. Turns out, that boy is an old elementary school friend, though she admits she barely remembers his face. This sends Kimura into an emotional spiral. What if one day, our constantly glasses-forgetting I forgets what he looks like too? After diving into her elementary school yearbook, I had a eureka moment. That mysterious boy? Yep, it turns out he was the notorious tease who always picked on her whenever she forgot her glasses. Such a contrast from Kimura, who's always had her back. Now, here comes the emotional roller coaster. With final exams in the rearview mirror, summer break is right around the corner. On their last day before the long break, the duo takes a nostalgic stroll in their local park, even sneaking into a secluded hideaway. Unexpectedly, I wants to get one last good look at Kimura's face. Knowing they won't see each other daily during the break, they relish this moment, trying to imprint each other's features into memory. But for our dear Kimura, this isn't enough. The thought of fading from Ai's memory is unbearable. Kimura impulsively grabs Ai's hand, proclaiming loudly that he wants to see her face throughout the summer, refusing to become just another forgotten memory. Now here's the twist. A trip down memory lane reveals that the two had met at a local grocery store during their younger days. Little Ai, sans glasses, and hence clueless about their meeting, had once whimsically remarked she wished her future husband would be as gentle as Kimura. Can you imagine? Our hearts are bursting, all right, fellow anime enthusiasts. I and Kimura's journey is making our hearts flutter big time. Make sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more delightful anime recaps. Till next time, keep the love alive and the anime playing. Sayonara!